water. It's a vital resource to the people and the economy of North Central Texas. Lakes, rivers, and streams are the source of drinking water for most of the region's five million residents. In addition to drinking water, surface waters provide numerous recreational opportunities, including boating, fishing, and swimming that are important to the quality of life in the area. Surface waters also provide habitat for the fish and wildlife that share the region with us. Clean water for drinking, recreation, and a healthy environment is a major factor in the quality of life for all North Texas residents. In order to maintain our quality of life and our economic vitality, we must safeguard the quality of our waterways. Citizens and local governments will need to make changes in their daily activities to help prevent stormwater pollution. This video will explore the challenges and the opportunities that lie ahead for North Texans to work together to protect water quality. Specifically, we will look at the threat to water quality from stormwater runoff and recent regulations aimed at reducing the water quality impacts caused by stormwater runoff. We then focus on the evolving regional program to assist local governments in North Texas in their efforts to provide citizens with safe and clean water and in complying with the new regulations. The subject of water quality doesn't make the headlines as often as it did in decades past. Our rivers and streams were once regarded as little more than open sewers, with often disastrous results. Since Congress passed the Clean Water Act in 1972, we've made dramatic improvements to the quality of our waterways nationwide, including the Trinity and Brazos rivers. Most of the advances are due to improved sewage treatment facilities, and tighter controls on industrial discharges. Despite the successes in controlling these so-called point sources of pollution, water quality problems still exist. According to the 1996 National Water Quality Inventory, about 40% of assessed lake, pond, and reservoir acres and 19% of river and stream miles have water quality problems. Each of our major rivers in North Central Texas, most notably the Trinity, has sections that do not meet the state's designated water quality standards. Many of the remaining water quality problems are caused by dispersed or non-point sources of pollution. Non-point sources of water pollution are generated by many common human activities, such as transportation, construction, agriculture, and landscape maintenance. The pollutants are usually transported overland by stormwater runoff before entering surface waters at many different locations. Simply put, stormwater runoff is rain that does not soak into the ground. It's a natural process. However, converting land from an undisturbed condition to a developed state impacts the amount and quality of stormwater that runs off the land. Rainwater that would have soaked into the ground now becomes stormwater runoff after falling on roads, rooftops, and parking lots. The increase in stormwater flows can cause downstream flooding and stream bank erosion. Runoff from developed areas collects pollutants, transporting them to our streams, rivers, and lakes. Oil, grease, metals, and grit are washed off the roads and parking lots. Pesticides, fertilizers, and herbicides are picked up from lawns and landscaped areas. Sediment and debris are carried off of construction sites. Pathogens from sanitary sewer overflows, failed septic tanks, and pet waste also enter the storm sewer system. And unlike sewage, which is collected and treated, contaminated stormwater runoff enters our waters without any treatment. The effects of pollutants in stormwater can impact local governments, water utilities, and residents. Runoff often carries sediment that settles out in slow-moving sections of streams or winds up in reservoirs, reducing storage capacity. Dredging to remove accumulated sediments, shown here at White Rock Lake, is disruptive and costly. Pollutants washed from roads, parking lots, and lawns contaminate drinking water supplies, requiring more extensive and costly treatment. 
Habitat degradation affects the health of fish and wildlife, and in some cases, leads to fishing bans, disrupting a popular form of recreation. A regional storm water sampling program has been conducted throughout the Metroplex for over a decade. Common pollutants found in these samples include heavy metals, pathogens, pesticides, and oxygen-depleting substances. These are the same pollutants causing water quality standards violations in our region's waters. The results of these studies indicate pollutants in stormwater runoff threaten the quality of our water in north central Texas. In response to problems associated with stormwater runoff nationwide, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, has issued regulations to reduce impacts caused by pollutants in urban runoff. These regulations include the ongoing Phase 1 stormwater permit for cities over 100,000 in population, and the more recent Federal Phase 2 stormwater permit targeting all other cities and counties located in census-defined urbanized areas. Cities over 10,000 in population located outside of urban areas may also be considered for inclusion in the Phase 2 permitting process. Other regulations could impact local governments in the future as well. Among them are the Total Maximum Daily Load, or TMDL, program, which addresses water quality problems in specific stream segments or reservoirs, and the Source Water Protection component of the Safe Drinking Water Act. Let's focus on the most immediate and comprehensive water quality regulatory program affecting smaller local governments, the Phase 2 stormwater permit. EPA Phase 2 regulations require identified cities and counties to develop, implement, and enforce a comprehensive stormwater management program. This program must be designed to reduce pollutants in discharges from their storm sewer system to the maximum extent practicable. Regulated entities will have to specify the practices they will implement under six program elements. These program elements, or minimum control measures, as they're referred to in the regulations, consist of educating the public on stormwater quality impacts, involving the public in the development of the stormwater program, detecting and eliminating illegal discharges, controlling construction site runoff, managing stormwater impacts caused by development, and preventing pollution from municipal operations. The EPA has estimated that it will cost Phase two municipalities just over $9 per household per year to implement the stormwater regulations. This table shows the anticipated annual cost to implement a qualifying stormwater program in the Metroplex. According to EPA estimates, the city of Keller, for example, could expect to spend approximately $71,000 per year on activities mandated by the stormwater program. Although the figures are estimates and individual local government spending could vary widely, it's apparent that these regulations will have a significant impact on government budgets. The Texas Natural Resource Conservation Commission, or TNRCC, has recently been granted authority over the stormwater program in Texas from the Environmental Protection Agency. TNRCC will draft its own stormwater regulations based on the EPA model. TNRCC has the option to make the Texas stormwater regulations more stringent than the federal regulations, but may not eliminate or lessen any of the federal requirements. Well, we'll have to to draft stormwater permits that are in accordance with the federal rules and regulations. And uh, these permits will have to ensure and maintain the quality of surface water in the state. But at the same time, we'd like to identify and take into account uh, local conditions or specific issues to Texas uh, when we're developing these statewide permits from the federal guidelines. In developing the, the phase two municipal permits, uh, we will identify stakeholders. This will be uh, small governments, uh, other governmental agencies like TxDOT will be affected. Uh, hopefully get good representation from the stakeholders that uh, will work with us in uh, identifying, working through these issues, and then we'll try to, to use that, that information in developing our permits. 
Regulated towns, cities, and counties are required to develop and submit a qualifying stormwater management plan to TNRCC no later than March 2003. TNRCC will then require regulated entities to fully implement their management program within five years. Be aware that the Phase II stormwater permit requirements are mandatory. The Texas Natural Resource Conservation Commission has the authority to pursue enforcement actions, including significant fines and criminal charges against violators of the permit. To assist local governments in the North Central Texas region in meeting stormwater regulations and achieving broad water quality objectives, the North Central Texas Council of Governments, or COG, has implemented a regional stormwater management program. Under this program, COG has assisted the seven largest Metroplex cities and the Texas Department of Transportation in cooperative efforts to improve stormwater quality for over a decade. Now that smaller cities and some counties are affected by regulations, COG has expanded the stormwater program to include these entities. Guiding this effort is a committee of public works officials, environmental professionals, and engineers from cities and counties across the region. This committee, the Regional Stormwater Management Coordinating Council, has crafted a strategy for managing stormwater quality. The strategy emphasizes a dedication to protecting the region's waterways and a commitment among local governments to cooperate in managing the quantity and quality of urban stormwater runoff. Specific goals of the regional strategy include protecting the health and welfare of citizens and the environment, effectively addressing state and federal regulations, lessening expenditures of local governments, sharing professional knowledge and experience, and training government staff and the development community. Participating entities will implement this strategy through regional stormwater management activities called cooperative initiatives. A number of these initiatives are already underway. Regular meetings held in each of the four main Trinity River watersheds provide an opportunity for neighboring jurisdictions to discuss options for managing stormwater and to obtain related information. Each year, COG hosts several comprehensive workshops featuring key speakers, including EPA and TNRCC representatives, stormwater management consultants, and staff from leading local governments. Classroom instruction of stormwater inspectors is offered through the program, and further training opportunities are under consideration. Through the program, representatives from participating cities and counties are identifying many other opportunities to work together on water quality. The resulting regional cooperative initiatives will help meet many of the requirements of the stormwater regulations. Program participants will be able to refer to these initiatives to satisfy parts of their jurisdiction's stormwater management plan. Of course, local governments will need to conduct their own stormwater management activities in addition to those developed under the regional strategy. Let's look at the Public Education Cooperative Initiative to get an idea of a typical effort that is being financed and implemented on a region-wide basis. Phase two cities and counties are required to implement a public education program to raise citizen awareness about the problems associated with stormwater runoff and inform residents of the actions they can take to reduce stormwater pollution. This initiative will help participants fulfill their obligation by developing educational tools such as storm drain inlet markers, informational brochures, and a stormwater web page. In addition, the program could be expanded to facilitate the region-wide financing and crafting of newspaper, radio, and television campaigns, educational video production, and more. Although some elements described will require supplemental financing, they would likely be more costly for individual cities or counties to conduct on their own. As this example demonstrates, the benefits of participation in the regional program might include lower overall expenditures, less burden on staff, and the sharing of ideas among jurisdictions. In addition, a region-wide coalition of local governments will have more influence in negotiations with regulatory agencies. 
despite the obvious benefits of regional cooperation. Some cities and counties may choose not to endorse each cooperative initiative. Thus, the regional strategy will be structured to reserve implementation decisions to each participating entity in recognition of their ultimate responsibility as the permittee. Developing an effective stormwater management plan that satisfies the regulations will be a substantial undertaking for affected cities and counties. This process will require the participation of various municipal departments and the involvement of businesses, the development community, civic groups, and the general public. Plan development may take several years and should be phased in as staff and financial resources allow. Accordingly, regulated entities should begin taking steps to ensure that they meet the deadlines for plan development and implementation. Local governments are encouraged to start this process now by taking the following steps. Determine organizational responsibilities for the various elements of the stormwater program. Work with citizens, businesses, and community interest groups to encourage their involvement. Develop a mechanism for funding the program, such as a stormwater utility fee. Train existing staff and hire new employees as necessary. Develop or review your jurisdiction's stormwater ordinance and drainage manual. And participate in watershed planning efforts, such as the Regional Stormwater Management Program. To be proactive, uh, local governments can become familiar with the current federal rules and regulations. I believe that they should begin to uh, anticipate what sorts of resources are going to be required and what resources may be already available to them in uh, meeting you know, future permit requirements. Local governments can share you know, expertise, uh, resources, and uh, experiences. And by coordinating and pooling these efforts, uh, can come up with pollution prevention measures and pollution controls that are, that are much more effective uh, in reducing pollution and probably much more cost effective than trying to originate these things uh, you know, individually and entirely upon themselves. Protecting the region's lakes, streams, and rivers in order to provide safe drinking water, exceptional recreational opportunities, and a healthy place to live for future generations and ourselves should be one of our major responsibilities. Meeting state and federal regulations may be an immediate need, but stewardship of the resources that sustain life ought to be the long-term goal of our activities. Cooperating on a regional or watershed basis with our neighbors in North Central Texas offers tremendous opportunities to effectively and efficiently implement strategies to control stormwater pollution. Let's work together to be sure that no local government shoulders an excessive load and that all residents of North Central Texas benefit from our efforts to protect water quality. After all, it's our water, so let's take it personally. <laughs>